Well, hello and welcome back to the Finding Freedom podcast. Today we're going to be talking about a topic I'm super excited about, which is homeschooling and finding a time for yourself. If you don't already know, I am a homeschool mom of three boys and I also work from home and I own my own fitness business and I do the podcast and the YouTube and social media and all the things. I am a busy mama and um, it's very important to me to make time for myself so that I then can pour into all of the other areas that I serve in. And so this question is one that I'm excited to talk about, to answer for you guys. Um, because I live it every day because making that time for myself is really important to me. And I feel like it's biblical because we can't pour into everybody else if we're not first pouring into ourselves. And I'm a big firm believer in that. And if you disagree with that, I'm sorry, that's, you're not going to sway me. So don't worry about that. Um, but today we're going to talk about that and some of the ways that I homeschool and find time for myself. So we're going to dive right in. The first way that I am able to homeschool my kids and still make time for myself is I wake up early. And part of waking up early, I guess I'll give you like a, a sub portion of this, part of waking up early is actually going to bed early. I can't go to bed at midnight and expect to wake up at 5 a.m. It's just not gonna work, right? And so I have to make sure that I go to bed at a decent hour, usually around nine o'clock, so then by 4.45 when my alarm's going off, I've had quite a bit of sleep. Seven and a half to eight hours of sleep is my sweet spot. I would say six and a half to seven hours is more of my sweet spot. But I need that that good seven hour stretch of sleep to feel rested and to feel ready for the day. Because nobody wants to wake up early and then by noon be completely exhausted. So you need to make sure that you're getting enough sleep. But waking up early is a really important part of my day for me because that's where I get to come into my office, I enjoy a hot, very hot cup of coffee, a fresh hot cup of coffee, and I sit down and I open up my Bible, and I open up my Finding Freedom Planner, and I journal a little bit, and I pray a little bit, and then I get in God's Word, and then I pray some more, and I just kind of like start my day on my terms with nobody needing me, with with just my mind being poured into, and my heart being filled by the Spirit, and by God, and and it's powerful. And so if you are a homeschool mama and you're not taking that time for yourself to get into God's word on your own, I think that that is, for me, it's, it's, it's a non-negotiable, like I have to do it. And so if you're not doing that and you're struggling, I would say that that would be the first place I would start is waking up early and spending that, that time with God. The second thing that I do, um, so then so once I, I'll go back to this, once I wake up early, then I am, you know, I have my quiet time. I have my prayer time. I pour myself a second hot cup of coffee and then I get into some work for the day because again, I work from home and so I have to get some things done. I have to maybe prepare homeschool lessons. I do a lot of that on the weekends. Um, but I just have usually about an hour after my quiet time before my kids start waking up. They're pretty early risers. And so I will spend that time getting some work done for the day, getting myself prepared for the day in whatever way that might be, and um, just doing the things I need to do. And sometimes I'll just sit and watch YouTube videos or I'll sit and scroll Instagram and just kind of, or read a book. Like it, it's not always productive Sally over here, always or productive Polly, I guess would be the right term for it. Doing all the things like, Sometimes I just sit and enjoy a cup of coffee and I watch a YouTube video or I get some worship music on and I just sit and relax or I read a good book. Um, but waking up early is a really important part of my day for me so that I can be filled up. So when my kids wake up, I'm excited and I'm ready to go because I'm already filled and ready to take on whatever the day has for me. The second thing that helps me with finding time for myself is creating a routine. And so part of that, like I said, is waking up early. But as soon as I wait, as soon as I wake up and then I go through my morning routine, I have another routine that comes after that as my kids start to wake up. I spend some time with them snuggled up on the couch or wherever I am. We'll watch a, a couple shows together maybe. I'll read a book while they're doing while they're watching a show, but we're all kind of snuggled up together. And then after that, I get ready for my workout. I feed us all some breakfast. And while they're finishing breakfast, I go outside. I get my workout in. And then once I come in for my workout, I'll finish having the rest of my breakfast because I don't want to eat like workout on a full stomach. So I'll eat half of my breakfast and then another half after my workout. 
and then I go shower and get ready. I ask the kids to go get ready while they're while I'm showering, so they're getting themselves ready for the day. And again, that's fine. That's part of finding time for yourself. I guess I would add that in as an extra tip that wasn't in my notes is helping your kids to become self-sufficient. And so they know how to eat breakfast, how to rinse their dishes and put them in the dishwasher. They're seven, five, and three. They know how to get themselves dressed, brush their teeth, brush their hair. And then once they're done with those things they and make their bed, then they can start playing while I'm finishing up getting ready. And so part of finding time for myself is helping my kids be more self-sufficient so that I can take time for myself. So I've had my quiet time. I've gotten my workout done. I've also spent time with them. Now I'm showering and getting myself ready for the day while they're playing and just being kids, right? And so they, there's, they know that routine. They know that that's how things go. So they know what to expect and they're not perfect with it. And we're not always perfect with our routine, but there's a consistent flow that we follow where they just know what the next thing is. And so when I ask them to do it, they kind of already knew it was coming and they are more likely to just go do it. When it's new, it's hard at first. You have to kind of build that discipline and that consistency and that'll take time. But creating that flow and that routine will help them to know what's coming next. So they know the faster they get ready, the faster, the more time they're going to have to play, right? And so they'll fin they'll start playing while I'm finishing getting ready because they know as soon as I'm done getting ready, we're going to move into our house chores and we're going to start our house chores for the day. And then once our house chores are done, it's school. And then after school, it's a little bit of playtime before um, lunchtime. And then we do nap time or quiet time. And so... Um, that's just kind of our flow for the day. And I have a lot of my own personal time in the mornings before they wake up. And then while they're getting ready and playing, I'll take that time to shower and stuff. And then in the evenings, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but that brings me into quiet time. So I went through my flow for the morning. Like we go through our morning flow. We do our homeschool. We have, we play a little bit, we have lunch and then it's quiet time. And I'm really adamant on quiet times. And so I've now just spent a good five or six hours with my kids, it's okay for me to put them in their room and say, hey, for an hour, you can read a book, you can use your Legos, you can do whatever. For my younger two, they still nap, so I have them take naps. And sometimes my oldest will even take a nap, but I really take advantage of that quiet time. And so sometimes I usually get about an hour. Um, I have the okay to wake green clocks or, you know, once it turns green, they can come out of their room. So whatever they're doing in there, as long as it's quiet and safe, I don't really care. They can just, they have their time and it helps them to have their own quiet time so that they're kind of separated and they kind of start to miss each other. And then they come back together and they're fighting less. Cause you know, after a few hours together, they start to fight more and more and more then they get separated and then when they come back together they kind of missed each other so that kind of helps with that but when they're having that quiet time again i'm adamant on that and they have that and i can do the laundry i can do the dishes i can take a nap i can get some work done i can sit outside and just enjoy it that's where i get my time for me is by making sure that they have that time for themselves to be quiet and just relax and then i can go be quiet and just relax and do whatever i need to do and then the fourth thing i have is getting help from your spouse because i think a lot of times as women we try to take all the things on for ourselves. we want to do all the things um, by ourselves and we don't like to ask for help and we miss out because our spouse is probably willing to help in most cases i know in some cases it's not but in most cases, if you ask for help from your spouse or your family or your friends, they'll say yes. And so asking for help and saying, hey, I need your help in X, Y, Z capacity. You know, I need you to do the dishes tonight with the kids so I can go have five minutes to just breathe or go take a bath. Or I need to go out to the store by myself today just because I need to get out of the house by myself. Or uh, I'm going to go and go for a run because I don't want to work out when my kids are awake. I want to go work out by myself. So I'm going to go for a run or a walk or whatever. Um, but asking your spouse for that time or when their, your spouse is home at, in the evening saying, Hey, after dinner, I'm going to go take some time to myself to go read a book or do again, do whatever you want. It doesn't matter what you do. I don't know why I keep giving examples, but go do what you want to do. You go do it. Your spouse takes the kids for 30, 40 minutes, you know, maybe an hour and they're with them and then you come back, you're refilled, you have your family evening together and you move on with the rest of your day. And so asking for help is not a bad thing. And then the last point that I wanted to make was 
Jesus needed alone time. And you guys knew I had to talk about the Bible in some capacity. This is a biblical podcast, biblical YouTube um, channel. But if Jesus needed alone time, we do too. And I think that we tend to feel guilty for wanting time for ourselves. And we always put ourselves on the back burner as moms. And I think it's very important to stop that and to stop trying to do it all and trying to do it all on an empty tank because um, you're not God. <laughs> None of us are. And we need time. If, if Jesus, the son of God, God himself needed time alone, then we do too. And it's okay to need that. And so there were six specific times in scripture that I was able to find that Jesus made it a point to be alone. One was in Luke chapter four, um, and it was in verses one through two, and then also in 14 through 15, where he was preparing for major tasks. So he was baptized and then he spent 40 days pr praying in the wilderness. And then he came out of the wilderness and he was tempted by Satan. And then he began his ministry, right? So he was preparing for this major task. The second one is to recharge after hard work in Mark chapter six, verses 30 through 32. He sent the 12 disciples out to do ministry. And when they returned, he encouraged them to separate from the people who were following them to the rest. And so he he knew that he was going to work really hard and do these big things. And so he needed to recharge after that work was done. So he prepared for a major task. He had to do it. He had he needed alone time when he had completed the major task. Um, as he was working through grief, when he when John the Baptist had been beheaded in Matthew 14, he had to go away and be alone. Um, he in Luke chapter six, before he made an important decision, he spent the night alone in prayer. And then the next day chose his 12 disciples in times of distress right before he was arrested and crucified. He went alone to pray. He was in emotional agony and he was he was stressed. And so he went alone to pray. And then also to focus on prayer, there's so many times throughout scripture where just in his ministry, he just needed to, to withdraw to desolate places. It says in Luke 5, 16, he withdrew to desolate places to pray. If Jesus needed to do that, how much more do we need it? Because we are not even close to Jesus. So if Jesus, the son of God, the son of peace, the son of man, needed all those things, needed the prayer and alone time and all of those moments, how much more do we need those? And so if you're feeling guilty because you need alone time, I hope this encourages you that you need alone time. It's it's normal to need that. It's also normal to need people, but alone time is also important. So don't feel guilty for it. Don't let yourself be beat up because you feel tired and overworked and overwhelmed because if you're doing it all and you're never taking a break and it's always on you and of course you're the feeling that way. So take some time for yourself, especially if you're a homeschool mama and you don't get time to yourself, you need it. And I hope that this will encourage you. I hope this episode will encourage you to take that time and really start to ask yourself how you can create it for yourself. Maybe you don't have the time right now. How can you create the time for yourself? Maybe you can wake up early. Maybe you can go to bed a little bit later than your family and your quiet time is in the evenings. How can you establish some sort of quiet time for your kids or get a babysitter once a week to have some time to yourself? Whatever that might look like for you. Only you know that. I can't give you the answers. I can only share what works for me. But taking time for yourself is a matter of finding the time for yourself. You, like you, you have to take it. <laughs> it's not just going to be there. You have to take it and you have to do it yourself. And I encourage you to do that if you're not. So I hope this helped you. I hope it encouraged you in some way. I would love to know if you have other tips on finding time for yourself. You can comment below. Let me know. Um, and as always, if you like this episode, make sure that you like Give me a rating, review, comment, subscribe, all the things. I love hearing from you guys and I love knowing what episodes speak most to you. And when you do those things, it also helps other people get to hear this message as well. So thank you guys for being such a great audience. I'm grateful to get to be here with you and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll talk to you later. Bye guys.